we're Chris and Teresa, and we would love to guide you on your fiber arts journey. We own a successful fiber processing mill and online needle felting business, experienced at raising all fiber animals, and have renovated a hundred year old school into a fiber arts retreat center. Processing, needle felting, yarn, roving, fiber animals, and sustainable agriculture are all topics discussed here. Think of this as your one stop shop for advice, information, tips, and getting your questions answered on all things from farm to needle. So pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be inspired while you learn. This is YouTube. Welcome to YouTube 232. Yes! Here we are in the studio, and we are going to share with you. So the past couple days, I've been working on a little presentation, a PowerPoint mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a... It's a fiber guild in Northern California that uh, we're presenting our story to. The and entire story. So be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted to share our story from the beginning. Um, uh, and we'll start with me. Uh, my business was Bear Creek Felting. I I'm Teresa Perleberg. And my business started when my daughter asked for a lamb for her eighth birthday and we couldn't resist getting her a lamb. We do live on a farm and had cattle, so it wasn't so far-fetched. But uh, the, the lady that we purchased the lamb from invited us to a spinning guild, which we were very interested in. We both wanted to learn how to spin. We were knitting. And the lady that sold us the sheep, she um, taught my daughter how to needle felt. And for some reason, this is progressing without my saying. <laughs> Um, she, uh, taught my daughter how to needle felt and I picked it up from my daughter and we, uh, I fell in love with it. Uh, we now have a flock of over 350 sheep. Uh, it has grown to, uh, provide for my business that I started, uh, from needle felting. And the first thing that I ever made was a sheep stayed up till three o'clock in the morning. I couldn't stop until I saw that it was finished and, I began demonstrating how to needle felt with my local spinning guild. People wanted to buy my products. And so I was excited, you know, that they wanted to buy them and I sold them. And I was living out uh, on a farm uh, 30 miles from any small town. And I wanted to help uh, provide for my family. I was homeschooling my four kids and my husband had three jobs. So I wanted to figure out a way to make money for my family. So I just started selling my sculptures on eBay and that was going very well. And it was kind of fun. Uh, we all enjoyed watching them sell. And as um, that grew, I decided to open up an Etsy shop. I started my own website. And uh, just from seeing my sculptures and things and people uh, wanting to purchase them, they started asking, how do you make them? And um I decided to put together kits. I was asked to uh, teach locally. And so I was teaching to local uh, 4-H groups and, and classes. And um, this progressing without me is <laughs> a bit distracting. distracting me. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so these are some of my sculptures. And I started uh, putting together needle felting kits with my wool. And at that point, I had to send all of my wool to a mill in Michigan. And uh, that was very, very expensive to put all your wool in a box. And um, and so then I found a local uh, uh, fiber mill, which you're going to hear about in a little bit, <laughs> where I could just drop off my wool and uh, it would be processed for me uh, just an hour away. Uh, so that really helped to uh, boost my business and my business was growing. I was selling on Etsy on my website. I was selling uh, kits. I was dyeing the wool in my kitchen. I was uh, um, having my kids help me put all of everything together for the kids. Uh, I was taking over my house and um, yeah, it was taking over everything. And um, so then I'm going to get to my kit. So these are my Bear Creek bunnies. These are uh, my snowman that I sell. This is a, oh no, what is it doing? <laughs> these are some of my kits. So we now have 28 kits uh, and uh, that's growing. I'm always adding new kits. They're all designed for beginners. 
so I want anybody that picks one up uh, to be able to complete them, even if they've never heard of needle felting before. All of the wool in the kits is grown here on my farm by my sheep and processed in our mill and dyed and assembled and sent out from, from the Gnome Schoolhouse, mm -hmm. uh, which you're going to hear more about in a little bit. And since I introduced all of these um, beginner needle felting kits, I had many asking, I want, they wanted to learn how to make the more intricate, detailed sculptures uh, like my elephants and my uh, giraffe. And so I put together the Bear Creek Needle Felting Academy online, which is a subscription-based uh, academy where uh, you can join for by monthly or annually. Uh, there's a full library of video courses from beginner all the way to advanced. There's a community where you can ask each other questions. You can ask me questions. Um, a lot of the problems usually with needle felting is the proportions. They can't figure out the proportions. And I like to help them with that. I do that by video or I will take their pictures and draw on them and, and help them to know where they need to add or, or um, remove <laughs> if necessary. So yeah, the Academy has um, grown and done very well for me. And, and, uh, um, so we're going to give it over to Chris and she was Dakota fiber mill before we partnered our businesses. And she is the one that processed all my wool. Yes. So get that back there. To the beginning. <laughs> um, I'm just... Chris Armbrust and I, I own and operated. Well, we still do under shepherd industries, but I started Dakota fiber mill in 2010 and Prior to that, well, way prior to that, I was a barrel racer and I rodeoed. And when I got married, my dear husband tried to love horses, but that didn't work out. So I sold all my horses and had an empty barn. Empty barn syndrome is no good. So then I talked him into letting me get four alpacas by selling it as I am going to make us so much money selling and hand spinning their fiber. Well, of course, I worked a full-time job, and it took me six months to do one fleece start to finish, hand processing it. So I started using an outside mill because I had friends and family that wanted to buy yarn for me, and there was no way I was going to sell my precious hand-spun yarn. So I started using an outside mill, and in 2009, as we were shearing our beloved boy alpacas, the alpaca shearer said, Chris, you should look into opening your own mill because there is a shortage of them in the nation. Well, I said, cool, I could work on the farm, and that would be amazing. I'll pray about it, and you got to be careful about what you pray for because within six months... I had found this English textile engineer who makes car who was making carters at that time. Um, Carter being the the combing machine that that makes the the roving from the from the 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 fibers. So I paid him. I bought the the carter from him, and then I paid him to round up all the rest of the equipment for me. And then I paid him to be on site with me for three weeks and train me on how to use this equipment because it is large textile equipment with a huge learning curve. This is, I have the old school textile equipment. It does not have electronics. It's all uh, done with gears and it, a huge learning curve. So I practiced and while I was practicing on my own fiber, I was collecting fiber animals because of course I loved animals and it was a good reason to collect all these different types of animals. So I had 18 different breeds of sheep. I had alpacas, llamas, a camel, yaks, goats, bunnies. I, I tried to get every animal. There's my dear Abraham every animal that gave you fiber. So of course now in rural North Dakota, I was on a pretty major uh, highway. So folks would drive by and they'd see a camel in my pasture. Well, in North Dakota, that's not a real common thing, surprisingly. So they would turn in and they'd want to see the herd. And, and then well, what would you do in that building? Well, you know, I have a fiber mill. So it just all this education just started happening. And then pretty soon the local university was bringing their their departments out twice a year, I had homeschool groups, 4-H groups, and Oh, it was such a passion. I was so delighted is 
teaching all these folks of here's where the fiber starts, you know, and here's how you harvest it. You don't have to kill that sheep. You do not have to, you do it this way and then bring them into the mill and show them the whole process and then step into our on-site store and say, hey, here's here's a skein of Abraham, the camel. This is what he looks like in, in yarn form and all the different other products that, that we uh, were producing in the mill at that time. In 2015, I was trying to figure out a way to use a lot of these shorter fibers, um, the second cuts, because I'm very thrifty. I don't like to throw anything away. So I wanted to find a use for this. And I, being a barrel racer, knew that felt did uh, saddle pads are amazing. So I contacted the local university and I partnered with four senior engineering students and they, to my parameters, built me this felting machine. It was an amazing partnership. And we still use that one to today. It is an amazing wet felting machine that can make an uh, inch and a half thick felt down to just a quarter inch felt. So during this time, of course, Teresa found me in 2011. I believe I started processing for her. And I just processed roving for her. I would do her whites and her grays. She would pick it up. And, you know, one when she was at the mill, she noticed this felting machine and she got all excited and said, we need to collaborate on 100% wool needle felting cushion because all of her customers were wanting this instead of using the, the foam, which is, of course, a petroleum based synthetic, horrible, you know, throw it away after two weeks product. So we did all these prototypes and we came up with the Bear Creek wool needle felting cushion in three sizes. And I um, continued making them for her and she would wholesale them from me and then sell them on, on her website. And I knew all the while she was doing this, her business was growing because she would tell me about, oh my goodness, I shipped out this many packages and this, that, and the next thing. And all during this, my business was growing and I needed more room. I needed to expand this mill. And I got to thinking, my goodness, we work so well collaborating on this. Why don't we go big and, you know, bring in more education, you know, make a facility, build a facility that we can do classes and we can do the mill will be on site and and Teresa can, you know, make more kits and doesn't have to die on her kitchen sink anymore and can get out of her or her kitchen stove and can get out of her basement. And so that's what we did <laughs> is we decided to partner. Um, and of course, um, her, our daughters were, were an integral part as well. There we are in the front of, of our beloved gnome schoolhouse the day we purchased her. But it all started prior to this on a trip to getting wool in Montana. Yeah. So after we decided to partner our businesses, uh, we had thought of building a new building. I'd had, uh, my customers were asking to come. They wanted to meet the sheep. They'd been purchasing my kits. They wanted to meet the sheep that provided the wool uh, and they wanted to work one-on-one -on -one with me. And there was no place on my farm for that to work out. Uh, so when Chris brought up the idea of us building something, I was kind of excited that that could be something. And then along with the educational flock that, that Chris was doing, um, everything just seemed to fit and we were, we worked very well together. So we headed off to Montana, uh, one weekend to get some sheep and some wool, and by the time uh, we weren't like a few miles down the road and I mentioned, well, what if we were to renovate an old building? Because I have been looking at these schools that are abandoned and just sitting there for years and thinking that, you know, a gym would be a good thing for Chris's mill. You know, she could just open, you know, put everything in the gym. And uh, so Chris grabbed right onto that idea because uh, we knew we needed to have something interesting, a destination to get them to come to a really small town in North Dakota. <laughs> and so we knew <laughs> that it would have to be um, something Hi. far out. So um, we decided that we would start looking for schools. Like before we got back from that trip to Montana, which was just overnight, <laughs> we had called several places to just see who owned the different schools in the area. Uh, we lived an hour apart from each other. So we looked at a, a school in between us and we were kind of excited about that one. Uh, you got our hopes up on that one. And when we went and toured it, uh, there had been 
some vandalized so badly and they had painted everything peach and spray peach. painted and the, yeah. somebody had stolen all the boards out of the floor and the windows were all broken it out. Was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. bad. And um, we were kind of discouraged, you know, when we had gone and seen that school. And I said, I remember driving by in this, this small town, which isn't very far from here and seeing this beautiful building on the edge of town. And I thought, well, that is a huge building uh, for this small town, a, a huge mm -hmm. school, really. And, yeah. And so it really caught my eye, but I didn't know if it was still there because I hadn't seen it in a and while. And plus it was so much closer to her than me. It was like 50 miles from my house, but. Yeah. But I thought, well, we were discouraged that day and we thought, mm -hmm. let's go just see if it's there. We don't even know if it's there. And so we drove up to it and uh, we weren't still sure if it was there because there were so many trees in front of it. And we uh, went through all of the trees and there was the school and we were very impressed with <laughs> the outside of it. Um, you know, other than, you know, it, it was definitely abandoned. We didn't know how long at the time, but it was, it had sat empty for 50 years and uh, hadn't been used as a school or for really anything uh, for 50 mm -hmm. years. Uh, we decided to find a way in and we, the right away when you walk in, there was the roof had caved in in the back uh, portion and mm -hmm. But as really we walked bad. around looking for this, we saw a big old barn out back. Oh, yes. And that just took our breath away because we we're like, oh, the Animal Education Center is already here. Yeah. So anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. So as we were walking through the school, it was pretty bad. But then when we um, got into the, like the main floor and I was like, wow, there has been no vandalism in here. Mm -hmm. There, All of the woodwork is original uh, and you know, there was some parts of the floor you didn't want to walk on or some parts of the steps that we might have fallen through, but, <laughs> you know, beyond that. But the overall the textbooks yeah. and the desks and the, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it was, this was the day, this picture is the day mm -hmm. that we purchased the school. Uh, the, the crook that we're holding represents uh, Shepherd Industries, which we had named our business uh, when partnering. Mm -hmm. And um uh, so we pose with this little shepherd's crook every year. Every year in the same spot in front yes. of the school. <laughs> yeah. So we purchased the school. Um, how many days later? It was six. We like to move. I mean, when we decided we were going to do something, we acted. <laughs> yes. We just went full steam ahead. So, so we, there's a much more story to this, but we wanted you, you to see, um, what it started out and what it is now. Uh, this took us over three years to complete the renovation. Uh, it wasn't easy. Uh, we had funding a, was very difficult. Had so many issues trying to find funding for a falling down school in a really tiny town in North Dakota with two crazy women that all they do is craft. They don't have a real business. They just craft. I mean, good grief. Yeah. yeah. So we finally, uh, one year after we purchased the school, received funding from an alumni of the school to mm -hmm. proceed. And um, yeah, and with the agreement that after two years, we would find conventional financing. And we have done that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have but... a $27,000 a month payment that we have <laughs> <laughs> embarking on, but it's all good. So here's a little video showing... Um, the progress.
I have no idea. So that we could, Teresa and I could just well ball every single time you watch that video. It, it means yeah. so, it means so much to us. Um, but moving on, <laughs> we here we are. We are Shepherd Industries at the hub. We are the partnership of Bear Creek Felting Dakota Fiber Mill. We are residing in the Gnome Schoolhouse, and we have a nonprofit, a five hundred one c three called the Gnome University. Yeah, so Awe is three different entities. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gnome Schoolhouse is separate from Shepherd Industries. And like like she said, Gnome mm -hmm. University is a nonprofit. Uh, mm -hmm. And Shepherd Industries is the heart of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Oops, now it's advancing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is us uh, at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival with our daughters, mm -hmm. uh, Katie and Libby. Uh, Katie uh, is our wedding coordinator and... Libby is our school chef. So which and there's granddaughter Abby. Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable food that gal produces. It's like you ask anyone who's come to any retreat or been to the Gnome School House, this food is wow. Anywho. So a little bit about the Gnome University. Mm -hmm. Uh we have so just building on what Chris had started uh before Shepherd Industries began with the educational aspect uh to the um, schools mm -hmm. and the uh, homeschool groups and the 4-H groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to continue that uh, as Shepherd Industries is growing. Uh, it's hard for us to shut down the mill. We have to shut down the mill if we're going to bring a tour through. Uh, it's hard to um, stop everything to give these tours. So um, what we have to charge for tours was not working for uh, schools mm -hmm. and which was heartbreaking for us. So the Nome Uni University Board uh, decided to help out in, in a way that they're making it um, uh, cheaper for schools to come mm -hmm. uh, and learn more, doing the, the mill tours. Uh, and we have a lot of plans for the future mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, we have hands-on projects for them to do. And then we also have classroom um, kits that we're, we're mm -hmm. going to put together and send out all about uh, fiber arts and curriculum so that even if they're in South Carolina, they can, they can go through our new university and get these classroom curriculum kits. And the reason this all kind of came to be is we've been doing a yearly fax teachers retreat where they come from all over the nation. It's limited to uh, 30 of these teachers and they just ate this up. 
they just, you know, the whole textile and, and we taught them how to make dryer balls and felted soap and all these little projects that they could do hands-on in their classrooms and to put these kits together for them with curriculum, explaining the whole process, you know, to downtown Chicago, it's, it's pretty amazing. And the kids, they're like sponges. I mean, they just love it. So, mm -hmm. and these things mm -hmm. aren't um, being taught in schools nope. um, because we've heard over the years, how many people think that we're killing the sheep to get their wool mm -hmm. uh, that they don't understand. Uh, we, that even yarn starts this way. <laughs> yeah. Even if you go to Walmart and buy synthetic yarn, it's all spun and plied and has to be made. It just doesn't, you know, happen. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is just a little bit about what the university does and it's growing. Um, that is growing all the time. And we have many more ideas, uh, scholarships mm -hmm. and things for classes at the school, at the mm -hmm. Nome School House um, and many more. Uh, and so Shepherd Industries, uh, we are very proud to say is a vertical wool company. So mm -hmm. we grow the wool here on our farm and it goes 18 miles away to be processed. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit about vertical wool. So you will notice um, that a lot of the branding is around uh, Bear Creek Felting. Um, Bear Creek Felting is Shepherd Industries. Uh, the only reason that we are focusing on Bear Creek Felting and the kits is because um, previously I had established a following online and we are just going with what's working for now, <laughs> building on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we do so many other products, uh, which we're going to add but right now we are focusing on, on what is working for us. Mm -hmm. to skip that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the wool all starts here at the farm. That's where we are today is at my house and mm -hmm. uh, the sheep are right out here. Um, and we are very proud to say that we um, do rotational grazing and uh, do a lot of things to help the soil and the sheep. Uh, in sustainable ways. And so this little video will show you a little bit more about that. Welcome to the Bear Creek Ranch, where we raise a flock of sheep for their high quality wool, which is used in our products. At Bear Creek, we prioritize the well being of our animals and the health of our land. Today, we will explore how rotational grazing plays a vital role in raising healthy sheep and improving soil health. At Bear Creek Ranch, we take great pride in raising a flock of sheep that provide us with the finest wool for our products at Shepherd Industries. Ensuring the well-being of our animals is not just about the quality of our wool, it's a fundamental part of who we are. To achieve this, we employ a rotational grazing system that allows our sheep to thrive while also benefiting the soil they graze upon. Every two to three days, we carefully dismantle the electric netting, granting our sheep access to a fresh patch of pasture. This practice mimics the natural movement of grazing animals, promoting their well-being and enhancing the quality of their wool. To ensure our sheep stay hydrated and content, we provide them with a portable water tank that accompanies them as they move from one grazing area to another. The benefits of rotational grazing extend beyond our sheep. By practicing the sustainable method, we significantly improve the health of the soil. Through rotational grazing, we give the grass in each grazing area ample time to recover fully. This recovery period allows for increased root growth, enhanced organic matter, and improved soil structure. Additionally, rotational grazing helps break the parasite life cycle. By frequently moving our sheep, we minimize their exposure to parasites, ensuring their health and the quality of their wool. By implementing rotational grazing, we prioritize the well-being of our sheep, which in turn, 
translates into high quality wool for our products at Shepherd Industries. We believe that the key to exceptional products lies in the care we provide to our animals and the sustainable practices we employ at Bear Creek. Thank you for joining us on this journey into rotational grazing with our sheep. At Bear Creek and Shepherd Industries, we are committed to raising healthy animals, producing the finest wool, and improving soil health through sustainable practices. But you gotta smile when you see those little sheepies out in the pasture. Ah, love it. Love it, love it. <laughs> and of course, shearing is next, and shearing is done once a year here on the farm. It takes a couple days. We bring in a professional. And that is me and Teresa's favorite time of year because we get to see what the good Lord has blown on these sheep. Every single fleece passes through our fingers. We skirt it, we grate it, we bag it, every fleece separately. All 380 of them or however many there are at the year. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we do a variety of, of other products not just the kits, we do other felted products, the insoles, coasters, um, we make bags and uh, yarn. Yarn, yeah, yarn, yarn. We do yarn too. <laughs> um, of course, roving, hand spinning, roving. We do hundreds of different colors of needle felting uh, fiber that, that is all in-house dyed. And, oh, this is really cool. We don't throw anything away. Everything from the time we skirt it and after we wash it, we use absolutely everything, including when we sweep the floor, we get the fluff off the top of the dirt pile and we use that as well. And when we stamp out, because we have a 15 ton clicker press that stamps out our products, our felted products, we take that waste, you know, it's like cookie cutter scraps and that's felted fertilizer because when that decomposes in the soil it releases nitrogen and nutrients and it feeds either that tree if you're gonna dig a hole throw some down in there it feeds that tree in the pot it's just amazing and it's just so cool when people buy it and then they report back to us that their petunias have never looked as healthy yes it also absorbs mm -hmm. the excess moisture mm -hmm. or holds the moisture if needed so yeah pretty cool product and this is some of the, the colors. We provide a variety of colors of wool mm -hmm. for needle felting. And we dye it all in-house, start to finish. Mm -hmm. Not in my kitchen. Not, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is our store at the Gnome Schoolhouse. Uh, we have a variety of products. Uh, these are all of the needle felting kits on the wall. And then, uh, of course, we have yarn. Uh, we do sell a variety of equipment for spinning, uh, weaving, all sorts of fiber arts as that mm -hmm. is our passion. Mm -hmm. um, and then our beloved school there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's come a long way. Oh, yes. So yeah. I don't know if you saw in the video that the entire roof came off and a new one was put on, uh, but she has come a long way. Yeah, we, we have a geothermal system. And so we are happy to report it is uh, pennies, pennies to heat and cool um, all 35,000 square feet, which, which is awesome. It's, it's slowly evolving now that we've been open, what, three years, it's slowly evolving into our true dream. And that is the fiber arts retreat center. Uh, we've of course had weddings and corporate retreats, different things, because we have a large payment, but teachers around the nation, people around the nation are coming. It's a destination build it. They will come and they do. <laughs> Yes. So uh, uh, we offer so many different possibilities. Mm -hmm. So we have scheduled classes and retreats uh, at the school, uh, week long retreats, weekend retreats. We have day classes, evening classes. Uh, we have bring teachers in. Uh, it's not we go beyond fiber arts. Uh, mm -hmm. We our focus is fiber arts, but we do go beyond that into um, all sorts of basket uh, weaving. Makers mecca yeah. of all. <laughs> It's a doer's paradise. <laughs> yes. So, and, and we are finally seeing that, um, you know, people are finding us and mm -hmm. um, I have a retreat coming up next month where I think there, everybody's from a different state. It is so mm -hmm. fun to see. Uh, flying in from all over. They're flying in mm -hmm. and uh, we do pick them up from the airport. Most of our retreats and are, are all inclusive. So you get everything. All you need to do is get your plane ticket or drive here and we will take care of the rest. Uh, we'll pick you up from the airport, bring you back to the airport. 
uh, you it's a uh, you each get your own room or you can share a room with a friend uh, and they each have their own bathrooms. They're mm -hmm. all decorated differently. Uh, most of them with fiber arts themes. Uh, we do have 11 guest rooms. So we do have quite a few. And uh, we have the on-site chef, my daughter, and which she does an amazing job. Everybody is always uh, very, very pleased with the meals and they never go away hungry. And it's, full bar, the right. Yeah, everything. Yeah, all your materials, included. everything. Everything's included. Mm -hmm. So just the plane ticket would be extra. Uh, it is. So this is the barn out back. It does need a little bit of help. <laughs> and this is we were <laughs> next. Yeah, barn. we were hoping to get it done this last fall. Um, this will be the Animal Education Center. It is not a dance hall. It is, we are going to bring the animals, the different breeds of sheep, so that you can see hands on what a final breed looks like. You can bury your fingers into that fleece. You can see the difference between an llama and an alpaca, up close and personal. And just so, so much education that we can do with having those animals on site. Because I know I have done it and I have seen how that just transforms. It, 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 it's the pivotal piece that is missing that will yes. be here this year. So this uh, barn is right in the backyard of the school. This is actually a view from room number seven, mm -hmm. guest room number seven. Yeah. So these, this is just part of one of it's a taste of fiber retreat where um, that we have twice a year mm -hmm. at the school. Uh, this is in our dining room that everybody's enjoying. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have uh, groups of spinners and uh, guilds come in. Uh, mm -hmm. This, I think, was Rock Day mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. had fun sharing. We have many different spaces, so we can have several groups at a time. So you don't have to come just for a scheduled retreat. You can create your own retreat. Uh, you have an idea. You have a bunch of friends you want to come with. Like I said, we have 11 guest rooms. Mm -hmm. You just need to call our venue coordinator, Kristen, and say we would like to do you know, this, mm -hmm. we'd like a tour of the fiber mill. We would like to do this and she will help you set up your own retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to bring your own things, mm -hmm. if you are a teacher and want to come and teach and have host your own retreat at our school, we would help you do that as well. And we take care of everything. You just tell us a uh, maximum of this many students. Here's the description. We take care of everything. We market it. We collect all the fees and you just get a check at the end of the, the retreat. And you stay for free. And eat for free. <laughs> and we'll give you a little glass of wine here and there. Because we are in the heart of the Napa Valley of North Dakota. So we have all these wineries that are surrounding us. So we have some delicious wines from. Yes. And a lot of our, our retreats, we will take you canoeing, mm -hmm. kayaking, uh, the river Thank nearby. You. There's a state park. Uh, this is an excellent birding area. Excellent um, birding. Mm -hmm. We do not have any TVs in the rooms because we're Watch all about that. making. <laughs> Unplug. Yes. Yep. So this and is our backyard of the school. It's just pristine. It's just so beautiful. And we can't in videos or pictures or even telling you, you have to experience the Gnome Schoolhouse. You have to walk in and you ask every single person that has come, they'll tell you the same thing. You need to do better videos or something because this is amazing. And yeah. It, yeah. It's so really this was a sewing. Uh, we have the entire gym that could be used for um, events. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little, another little video to... Explain. Are you in need of a getaway? A place where you can relax, learn, and unleash your creativity? Look no further than the Gnome Schoolhouse, your perfect retreat destination. Nestled in the heart of North Dakota, the Gnome Schoolhouse offers an extraordinary experience for those seeking a unique escape from the everyday chaos. Step into a world where beauty, tranquility, and inspiration intertwine. Picture this, a beautifully restored schoolhouse, surrounded by vast farmland as far as the eye can see. It's a sight that will take your breath away and transport you to a place where time slows down and your imagination runs wild. At the Gnome Schoolhouse, you can connect with nature and meet our friendly sheep and alpacas. As they graze peacefully in the fields, experience the joy of communing with these gentle creatures and witness their playful interactions. Seeking a space to work on your creative projects? Look no further. Our spacious schoolhouse provides the perfect environment for you to delve into your artistic endeavors. Whether you're a painter, sculptor, or writer, the possibilities are endless. And for all you fiber enthusiasts out there, we have something special just for you. Visit our on-site fiber mill, where you can witness the magic of transforming raw wool into exquisite yarn. 
Let your fingers glide through the soft fibers and experience the satisfaction of creating something truly unique. But the Gnome Schoolhouse is not just about indoor activities. Venture into the great outdoors and explore the wonders of nature. Kayak along serene rivers, hike through picturesque trails, and immerse yourself in the beauty of the nearby state park. There's no shortage of adventures to embark upon. When you're ready to unwind, simply relax and bask in the awe-inspiring surroundings. Let the gentle breeze caress your skin as you find solace in the peaceful ambiance of the Gnome Schoolhouse. And here's the best part. The Gnome Schoolhouse offers a range of luxurious amenities to enhance your experience. Our unique guest rooms, each with a private bath, provide a comfortable and intimate retreat where you can recharge and rejuvenate. Hungry after a day of creativity and exploration? Indulge your taste buds with our amazing cuisine. Our talented chefs create culinary delights using locally sourced ingredients, ensuring each meal is a feast for both the eyes and the palate. Looking to unwind with a drink? Our bar offers a wide selection of beverages, from handcrafted cocktails to local craft beers. Sip your favorite libation and mingle with fellow guests, sharing stories and laughter as the evening unfolds. And here's the best part. The Gnome Schoolhouse is available for you to host your own arts and crafts retreat. Gather your friends, colleagues, or fellow creatives and let us provide the perfect backdrop for your next creative endeavor. We'll take care of the details while you focus on what truly matters, letting your imagination soar. The Gnome Schoolhouse is calling, inviting you to create your own unique experience. Don't miss out on this extraordinary opportunity. Come and explore all that the Gnome Schoolhouse has to offer. Visit our website at gnomeschoolhouse.com and book your retreat today. The Gnome Schoolhouse, where relaxation, learning, creativity, and luxury unite in perfect harmony. We had a land tragedy. We did. She did. So, a couple days ago, we had, uh, we were surprised by a baby lamb out in the U Pen, mm -hmm. and which brought many things to mind, like what happened here. Mm -hmm. Who? What, th this was the first year that rams did not get in, out, get out, and get in all yes, the other pens. Yes, they have solid fencing. Yes. And so there was a lot of thinking. What? Who is this? And what, where did this lamb come from? Jeff and I went out and got the lamb and the mom in, and it turns out it was one that we had purchased, mm -hmm. uh, and who came to us later. There was two of them, and so this must have happened. <laughs> not on our property yes. and so it wasn't something we did we were allowed to happen and uh it was the adorable lamb it was born out we just have a muddy lot right now because everything's melting uh, they do have a nice cozy barn with hay but you weren't expecting this no we weren't yeah. expecting this at all and so it was turns out it was 30 some degrees that day which it's Which is good. beautiful, yeah. It could be really bad this time of year. Could have been 30 below. Yeah. So yeah. we were so proud that we've seen it. We got mm -hmm. the mom in. The mom was, she had been shown at the fair. So she mm -hmm. was very mild-mannered. Mm -hmm. And she seemed to care about her lamb. Everything was going good. We put her in uh, one of the lambing jugs because mm -hmm. this was her first baby. Uh, I got several good videos of this baby. Mm -hmm. We fed it. Um, a bottle just because we weren't sure how long it had been born and mm -hmm. it sucked up this whole bottle like mm -hmm. a trooper mm -hmm. uh, and then later uh, Libby and I went out and tried to get it to nurse from the mom and it nursed from the mom mm -hmm. and so everything was good and then later that evening we were sitting in the living room and I said I'm just gonna check on my baby lamb on the cameras and I checked and I was like wait a minute the lamb is laying flat on on its side. This is not a good sign. No. So Jeff went out there, and it was still alive. Oh, it was? Mm -hmm. And he brought it in, and we um, tubed it. I tubed it with electrolytes, mm -hmm. thinking, because it was so cold, and mm -hmm. I don't know how it got so cold in between. It was just a couple hours, mm -hmm. and everything seemed good, because usually if you get them connected and they can nurse from the mother, they just... They know Warm what up. to do mm -hmm. from then on, and you don't have to interfere at all. And uh, so we brought it in, and it was very cold. Uh, it was not well. Mm -hmm. I gave it electrolytes, and a lot of times if you give them tubed electrolytes into them, and a lot of times if you give them electrolytes, it's just a couple minutes, and you just see a different mm -hmm. lamb coming out, and that wasn't happening. happening. So then mm -hmm. we had a dextrose shot 
uh, that we could give them if mm -hmm. their temperature is under you know so much and so it was very cold and so mm -hmm. we gave it this dextrose shot um, and it, short, it died shortly after that mm. which was very sad because Oof. It was yes. such a nice little sign of spring. It was like a little yeah. highlight. This one's so foggy and disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's been nice temperature-wise, yeah. but this lamb was Dreary. just a nice yeah. little. And I shared a little thing on Instagram, of course, and that seems to be <sighs> not a good idea. And yeah, everything was going good. So we don't know what if there was something internally wrong with the lamb from the mm -hmm. beginning. It's hard to know. Or if maybe the mom stepped on the baby we don't mm. know mm -hmm. that has happened in the past there was some internal injury but yeah dang it ended yes. all at 11 o'clock with not very happiness I yeah was, yeah pickles but in case you saw this new lamb arrive on it did pass instagram away. it's mm. not with us still mm. or we would be in the barn right now right. and there would be so many more pictures it. and videos yes, yes. It seems so healthy. And anyway, yeah, uh, uh, this isn't the first lamb we've seen um, die in front of us. Yeah, it is, uh, and it won't be the last, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we are changing our creativity plan of the month. We are because yeah. mm -hmm. it's what? It's the, the sixth. sixth. We have not. We have no idea what kind of weaving we are going to do or what. And there's it so. Is. so that's so vast so vast yes. we could do a year on weaving but we're going okay. to try rug punching rug hooking or needle punching that or rug combo it's actually needle punching needle punching or rug hooking it's, oh, it's so confusing we're going to learn about this so we're going to start with the punching tool Right. So Chris had a mm -hmm. kit that what, that I got in Maryland five years ago. Yeah, in Maryland. Uh, we oh went to the goodness. Maryland Sheep yes. and Wool Festival, and yeah. Chris found this yep. rug hooking, which kit. no, it's needle punching. No, it's rug punching. <laughs> it's needle punching. Needle punching with rug yarn because they're using <sighs> rug yarn. Needle punching, but it's it's a sheep. It's a cute little sheep, and. So we went and dug mm -hmm. through her stash at home. We she found wasn't it. Sure, she could find it. <laughs> I was shocked. And found we found it, right it mm -hmm. and then because I don't have anything, mm -hmm. I don't have any rug hooking, needle punching, at all. So then, mm -hmm. uh, I once I found out what her kit was, mm -hmm. I went on Etsy and I found a, which was tough. It was because it was I couldn't very find tough. a complete kit. I could find that was tough. Where you need to purchase this separately. So we might need. have to make a complete kit, because well, if we like just, this. you never know. We'll have to see. So I found mm -hmm. what was it? Flowers? No, no. It's, You'll see. Yeah, it's a surprise. Yeah. And so Chris is getting a head start. No, Chris did not get a head start. Well, you should because I have to wait for mine to get here. So I have the okay to go ahead and start. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, uh, cause I need a head start. Sometimes. Yeah. So, do your husbands and kids. Okay. Last week's question <laughs> was, oh, we only had one. We did. So if you have questions for us, we we love to answer. Yeah, your questions. and this one's kind of funny because this you has just been a put your question in the comment section below, and we deal. will answer it. So this question was, do your husbands or your kids watch your videos? <laughs> and then so they proud. must be so proud. Yeah, I guess. They can't watch our videos because they're too embarrassed. <laughs> well, no. That's what our daughters I, I shouldn't will say that. directly Steve, tell us. Right. But mm -hmm. Steve has watched. He so has. Steve, if you're watching, mm -hmm. thank you. He's gotten a little busy in mm -hmm. the last few months, but... Yeah. He has watched. He does. Yeah. He starred on it before. Mm -hmm. and my husband has, he didn't watch it forever. And then mm -hmm. he tried to do like a little catch up where he mm. was just watching all the old ones. Mm -hmm. I think he stopped. I don't think he watches it anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. But definitely not our daughters. No way. Nope. They're very well spoken that no. Mm -mm. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> it's too embarrassing. Uh, mm -hmm. My sons, no. They don't. Your son? He does. He occasionally he does. Yeah, he occasionally right, comments. Comment below. 
Uh, my sons do not. Uh, my mm -hmm. daughter-in-law. Mm. She does. does. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while. So As a good Tori, daughter in law if would. <laughs> if you were watching. Bless you, dear one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for not being embarrassed. <laughs> Last week's question and answer. This this is good. It was. It was. Thank you very much. Yeah. So what what's your favorite local yarn and craft store you would like to see our products in? And mm -hmm. we got several answers. Mm -hmm. And Sandra Dolfa Fori no, four it's one three. Is Donna Four. Donna Fori four one three. Congrats. You are the winner. Yes. You just need to contact us on BearCreekFelting.com mm -hmm. on the contact form. Tell us your shirt size and, you may and your may, address. may or may not get a shirt. You'll get a prize. You'll get a prize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next week's question is da, 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 given da. to us by Kristen, our venue coordinator here, mm -hmm. uh, when she walked into my office and she said, hmm. your next question should be, how many needle felted creations does Teresa have in her office? And I got it way wrong. And she was standing in the office. I was. So, yeah. so I don't know if that helps or hurts you, but uh -huh. yeah. Hard to count. It is. So we have mm -hmm. lots of upcoming classes mm -hmm. and retreats here at the Gnome Schoolhouse. Okay, the weekend in the fiber mill. We have quite a few spots open in there. Seriously, we have so much fun. You need to sign up for that and come and join us. Mm -hmm. You will not. It's a hands-on. It is. In the fiber mill you're down experience. in the mill. You're you're Immersed. elbow deep in in fiber, all and it's all fiber sorts arts. of wonderful things. Yeah, and we have and so not much to fun. mention we have comfy, lovely guest rooms oh, and amazing and food. food and drink and oh my and new goodness, friends. yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so she has one coming up this spring that we'd like to see full. Yes, and then and one, one in, in the fall. fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if one of them doesn't work for you, but tell your friends, fiber. Yeah. If you're in like a fiber guild. Oh my bring goodness! That up to them. Bring that the entire guild, and you guys would not be sorry. Yeah. No. Everybody so fun. in the ones in the past have oh, had so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a fun time. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So anyway, well, we have to get on to our beds. <laughs> God bless you all for joining us, supporting us, watching us, and uh, ans asking questions. And yes, just the comments below really help us a lot. Liking and subscribing help us helps Absolutely. us a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, thank you. Yes, to help us become the makers mecca of the world. So. Wow.